Oh no, light map errors, the bane of anybody working the Blender to Unreal pipeline. Don't worry, I'll show you how to fix them. The core problem is that you can't fix them in Unreal, you have to fix them in Blender. Unreal, for some reason, is incapable of creating its own light map UVs. Every other game engine on the planet can do it, but Unreal can't. You have to pass it a compatible UV map so it can derive them. And a compatible UV map means a UV map with no overlaps. Now this is not a problem if you've just got a plain Jane mesh like this one with no modifiers. You can just smart UV project or whatever your UV projection method of choice is. Uh, as long as you don't end up with any overlaps, you're going to be golden. No problems at all. But what if you have modifiers like this engine over here? This engine has a mirror modifier. Even if we set it up so that there is no overlap here, this mirror modifier is going to get applied when we export the mesh. It has to be in order to export the mesh. And if we do that, then we're going to see that... Uh, Ah, oh, there's something behind it. There is now 100% overlap because they duplicated the mesh and just inverted it on the x-axis, right? So this is no longer going to light. This is going to be a disaster, and we're going to see a lot of complaints. It's going to be a nightmare. One thing we could do is we could apply that mirror modifier here in Blender and then re-unwrap the UVs. Oh, that's a destructive method. It's a pain in the butt. It makes it very hard to go back and change things later. It makes it so your textures are a big old mess. You don't want that. We would like to remain non-destructive as much as possible, which means leaving this mirror modifier here in Blender and never applying it. Not until we're absolutely 100% sure it's okay. But how can we do that? If the UVs are always going to overlap, we're always going to have light map trouble, right? We're done. That's all we needed to do. If we apply this and we take a look, oh, would you look at that? We now have two perfect clones. Because our UV map is restricted to the 0 to 1 range, and we told it to create a, the duplicate UV map one offset, we end up with two precisely offset UV maps. And these UV maps will work perfectly with any shader that's compatible with ranges outside of 0 to 1, which is most as far as I can tell. This means that we're going to have perfect texture looping, and it's going to look like, like it's an exact mirror. Works great in most cases. Some cases it doesn't work so great, um, but those are really outliers. If you have one of those cases and you do need to pack it into the 0 to 1 range, it's not that big a deal. One of the things you can do is simply reduce this to 0.5 and then like squash all of this down. And then when we apply it, we end it up like this. That's fine. Works great there. Another option would be to use the uh, mirror instead here. The problem with this is that it's going to create a perfect mirror rather than a duplicate. And that means your texture is going to have to be mirrored or ping-ponging or something. Uh, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I really recommend keeping it simple unless you've got, uh, you know, specific strange requirements on your shaders that require another approach. This approach works great. It does have a couple of things you need to be aware of. One of those things is this. We're, uh, we're mirroring on two axes. So even if we were to tell this to offset, what's it actually going to do? So let's unwrap it. Boom, boom, there it is. What happens when we apply? We end up with three? Why are there three? What's going on here? Well, what happens is that it does the x-axis and it creates these two. And then it does the y-axis, which creates these two. And if you didn't realize it, this is two on top of each other. So that's no good. That's not going to work. What we need to do instead is use two mirror modifiers. One for the x and one for the y, like this. Simple, easy, no problem. And then simply offset one of them on u and one of them on v like this, and then we can leave this here forever in, in Blender. When, we, when it gets exported and they get applied, choop -boop, choop -boop, we end up with this, no overlaps. And as long as your textures loop, it works great. This is compatible with more than just mirror modifiers. For example, we could use an array modifier, uh, you know, five arrays, you know, is that going to cause us problems? It sure is, because it's going to create five perfectly overlapping UV maps. Oh, what's this? Pow. 
and then pow, and then look at that. Five distinct separate UV maps, perfectly looped. Works great. Doesn't work for everything. Not every single uh, modifier in this uh, project, in this, in this uh, blender, actually does UV offsets properly. Here's an example. Solidify does not do UV offsets properly. There's no, there's no UV option here, which is really awkward and annoying. But it's even worse than that, because what we can do is we can actually set the materials to be different. So if the skin material is different than the base material, that's fine, because when we are putting things into Unreal, the sub meshes are organized via their materials. So the inside here counts as a different sub mesh, and those can have overlapping UVs all they want, as long as each individual sub mesh doesn't overlap. So that means that this works fine, except the rim because the rim has invalid UV data. Just, it's invalid, magic. So this will not work. If we were to export this, it would end up with a full 50% light map overlay. Like, that's, that's awful. It's a 50% it's a clash. It's never going to light properly. What a pain. But it works fine if we don't actually export the rim. If you don't need the rim, then you can do it like this. Use one material for, for the outside, one material for the inside, and it'll be imported fine. You won't have any problems. But that rim has invalid UV data, and the only way around that is to actually apply the solidify modifier and then unwrap the rims. Pain in the butt, right? Sorry, I can't find any way around it. Let me know if you know one. So when you're thinking about modifiers like this, take a look and see whether there's any way that you can break it up by either offsetting the UV map or by changing the material, because those are the two things that are going to make it compatible. If it's a different material, it counts as a different submesh. And if it's offset, just put it somewhere where it's not overlapping. Very basic. A few other things you may want to know about with at least this particular exporter tool Normally, you're going to end up with the scale applied. So this, for example, has been scaled up. That will end up being exported as the default scale. So you're going to want to make sure that you're not scaled up, or you're going to want to find wherever the checkbox is in here that has that option. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that if you create uh, parent objects and child objects, for example, if we were to move this back here and mount it on our engine like this, by default, if we export this, it's going to export this as part of the same mesh. Now that's fine, as long as this object has different materials or a non-conflicting UV map. Because as I said, the material determines how the UVs are split up or how the, how the sub meshes are split up. So when we export this, all of this orange stuff is going to be part of the same sub mesh, even though it's on two different objects here in Blender. And all this gray stuff on the bottom, same deal. This and this are going to be part of the same sub mesh because they're the same material here in Blender. You can get around that pretty easily just by assigning different materials to them. In, you know, in Unreal, you can assign the same material to two slots and it works fine, but that's going to end up importing wrong if you do it here in Blender. Magic, right? Once you get used to it, it's pretty straightforward. It's not too bad. Most of the non-destructive editing that you might want to do here in Blender can stay non-destructive and export fine. All you have to do is make sure that when it gets exported and all of those modifiers get applied, you end up with something that does not have any overlapping UV maps for the same material. That's it. Have a good one.